Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel and welcome back to another video. Today we're going to be going over part 9 of the warehouse design series and in this part we're actually going to put pallet racking into the warehouse. So if you're unfamiliar with what pallet racking is, it is racking that goes inside a warehouse that holds pallets and it's usually multiple levels high. Uh, depending on how high the warehouse is, it can be you know upwards of you know, seven to eight levels high, it can be as low as four levels high. It just really depends on the height of the roof of the warehouse. But in today's lesson, I'm going to show you what the pallet rack will look like inside the warehouse and kind of give you an idea of how we want to lay it out. All right, real quick, before we get started, please consider subscribing to the channel. This kind of lets me know how the content's doing, lets me know if you guys like it, and it'll keep you in the loop with any upcoming videos. If you like the video, give it a like down below. If you want to see something else, leave it in the comments section below. I'm kind of working through some other videos that people have left comments for already. If you want to support the channel, there's a link down below as well. And with that, let's get into the video. All right, so we're going to jump into this. And the first thing I want you to notice is that I've actually built a uh, pre-built rack here. And these racks are going to be enough to hold two pallet locations. And if we measure them, we're going to see that they're roughly eight feet. So eight feet is 96 inches. And each pallet is going to need about 40 inches. 40 inches times 2 is 80 inches. So you have about 16 inches of wiggle room or play in that rack just to make sure your pallets aren't completely squeezed in there. The next thing I want to notice or want you to notice is where we're going to put the um, pallet racking in general. And we're going to assume that this uh, facility is going to be a cross dock facility. And by that I mean we are bringing stuff in on pallets. We are holding on the pallet, so we're going to put it away in the rack. And then when it needs to leave the facility, we're going to pull it from the rack, and then we are going to put it onto a truck. So we don't really need a whole lot of other space for packing tables, um, desks, office equipment, all that stuff. We can really kind of just focus on the physical rack in this warehouse. With that being said, we are going to kind of put the rack right in this square, and we're going to get started up here. So what I'm going to do is take this and I am going to move it and we're going to grab it right here. And since it begins right here, we're just going to put this right at the edge. And actually, I'm going to grab it one more time and move it to the edge of this column. Now that it's at the edge of the column, we're going to copy the entire thing and we are just going to actually move it. And you can do this with arrays as well. So if you want to create an array, it's probably a little bit easier. Personally, I like to just go this way. It allows um, me to, it's, there's no real benefit to doing it this way. It's just the way I like to do it. But um, again, it's to me a little bit easier. And then honestly, at this point, I can just start grabbing the entire thing. We're going to copy it again and just start moving it down right there. And then maybe we can do one more right there. And we came out a little bit further than that because they're not evenly spaced. But that is how far I'm going to want my rack. So I want it a little bit further this way because I want to be able to pull pallets down and stage in these locations. Now, you might be wondering, well, there's racks or, uh, excuse me, not racks, support columns inside the racks. Now, that is correct. Typically, with that situation, you are just not going to be able to use that pallet location. It's going to have to be a dead location, and whatever system you're using or however you're storing your product in the computer, you're going to have to notate that that location cannot be filled with product. All right, so the next thing we're going to do is we're actually going to create more racks and we're going to start going south. Now, you can still load the rack on this side, but we want to create racks going this way. Now, since this aisle's free and you're not going to have any obstructions here, you don't really have to worry about it, but we're going to need to look at the aisle length. And you're going to need enough length in the aisle for forklifts to maneuver and pull stuff while backing in and out. And I always go with about a 10 foot 9 to 11 foot aisle length. So for this example, we're just going to go with 11 feet, and this might vary based on municipality or state or local government, but for me, I always use 11 feet. So I'm going to go right here. I'm going to come down 11 feet, 
and we are going to copy this whole thing. And one thing I want to point out real quick too that I didn't a second ago was that these building support columns are locked. So when I go and copy this entire thing, I can copy it. And what I can do, we're going to copy right there, is I copy the rack, but the building support columns do not come with it. So we're going to put it right there. We are going to put it right here. Now, one thing that I need to be clear about is that you're going to run into an area where you come close to columns and they're going to be in your drive path. So for example, right here, we're going to copy this. Let's copy this whole thing. And as you can see here, my building columns are in my drive path. So instead, we're going to come up here and we're going to get as close as we can to that building column while putting it in the rack. So this aisle is going to be a little bit shorter, but that's okay. We have an 11 foot spaced aisle, so we're good. So now what we're going to do is actually we're just going to copy this whole rack again and just keep going with 11 foot. There's going to be a couple different aisles that have narrower aisles, and that's okay. Again, 11 feet is the max that I really have it at. I've seen aisles as narrow as 7 to 8 feet. So we're going to go right there, right there. And then what we're going to do here is we're actually just going to come right here again. And we're going to go right there. I want to measure this aisle to make sure that it's not going to be too narrow. So seven feet, we are going to say that's too narrow. So what we're going to do to make that less narrow is I'm actually going to take out this row of rack. Now, this isn't optimal because you're going to lose locations. But here, as you can see, we are now going to do a single row of racking instead, and this will get us to a greater aisle length. Let's see, we've got 11 foot 8 now. We're good to go. A little bit longer, honestly, but that's okay. It's safer and it's a need. So what we're going to do here is come back, copy this again and continue on bringing it down. And if the same thing happens, which it very well might, we are going to need to do the same thing as well and bring that aisle in. So here we're actually going to extend the aisle out because we're not close. And this is going to be another wide aisle. What I'm going to do is I'm going to grab this. And we're going to move it right, whoop, right there. That's a little bit of an extra long aisle. And then we're going to continue to copy and paste on down. All right, the last adjustment I'm going to make since that's in the middle is we are going to bring this one up just a little bit. or down rather, to make sure that column's buried. Now, as you can see, it is a little wonky, and we're actually gonna go ahead and erase all of these two, because I don't need those. But unfortunately, in warehousing, you're never gonna have perfect aisle widths. You kind of have to go ahead and see what works best, but most likely, you're gonna have some weird wide aisle, and you're gonna have a weird single aisle, but you need to make sure that those support beams are not in your drive aisles. That is a recipe for disaster. That is how they get hit with a forklift, and you just don't want that. They're very costly to repair versus repairing a rack is a little bit cheaper and losing some locations. All right, so we've just created a lot of PAL locations. Specifically, there's 27 down here this way, and then you have two across, so 27 times 2 is 54. Then you have 54 times one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Fifty-four times eleven equals five hundred and ninety-four, plus another twenty-seven single row. That is roughly six hundred and twenty-one bays. And then you multiply that by two because they each fit two pallets. Okay, so you're at twelve hundred and forty-two pallets of locations. And then if it goes up four to six high, we'll just say it goes up four high. You could store almost 5,000 
loca pallets in this warehouse. You're at 4,968. You're very close to 5,000 pallets in the entire warehouse just by this small little rack setup. So the last thing I want to call out is that depending on where your municipality is or what state or what country you're in, you're probably going to need lighting in these racks as well. And I'll go over that later when I do an electrical video. But you're going to need lighting in the racks. You're going to need egress lighting or emergency lighting in case the power goes out. And you're probably going to need a sprinkler system in there. So sometimes, depending on where you're at, again, the sprinkler system might need to run through the rack. Sometimes it just needs to run overhead. But it's something you're going to have to think about in the future or when you're designing the rack uh, initially. So with that being said, I'm going to wrap the video up here. Hopefully it was helpful. If you have any questions, leave them down below. If you like the video, give it a like down below. Subscribe to the channel if you want to. And I appreciate you guys giving me your time and have a good rest of your day.